Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Hotline League. I hope you all have your world's tibbers in your arms, because we're going to need to hold on to a stuffed animal after everything we've just experienced in the past 24 hours. Of course, this coverage is brought to you by Alienware. The show is brought to you by Alienware. So thank you to Alienware for supporting the show. Speaking of Alienware, Mark is joining us live right now from Dublin, Ireland, the place where world is not happening uh and also mark lives in la so you know i don't know how he ended up over there but how's it going mark this is indeed actually where do, uh the world's taking place the korea thing is just a front um i'm doing great uh i woke up at 3 a.m to do the whole casting the series thing because it was at 9 p.m last night for all of you guys uh and then i was up until 5 p.m my time I took a three-hour nap, and now I'm back to talk to you all about this. So he's going to be very lively and very exciting. Uh, I'm going to no, bring my A game. Thank, thank you, Mark, for doing this, too. I appreciate it. Uh, and all of us, the reason this isn't happening at, like, 9 a.m. Um, is because Mark is is willing to take a nap and have a weird sleep schedule. So it's very generous of him. He, he deserves our appreciation. How you I'm been doing, do Mark? This. What's been going on? I'm gonna on? do this. I'm gonna pass out. Uh, not much is going on. Uh, I'm I'm a pretty notorious shut-in uh, around worlds uh, or like MSIs and finals. I'll I'll not go out if I can avoid it. So travel over here, not the best. Had uh, some little problems. Hotel room wasn't ready um, when we got here. It was like 9 a.m. Uh, which is, you know, standard to be fair, but I hadn't really slept on a plane at all because I just don't sleep well on planes. So I was also nocturnal before this, which funny enough actually lines up pretty, I the exact same like actual time that yeah. I would be asleep in LA is like the same I would sleep here. Like I go to bed here at 5 p.m., which is like 8 a.m. there, which is like when I was already going to bed. So right. there was like no adjustment period, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, I just hadn't slept in a long time. So I slept for like 13 hours when I landed in Dublin and, uh, now we're chilling watching, uh, the NA dreams get crushed early. Yeah. Uh, did you watch anything or play anything on the flight? Uh, no, uh, steam deck cucked me a little bit. They, you know, like when steam knows there's an update for a game, it'll be like, you can't play the game until yes. you update, even though I don't fucking want to do that. Just launch the version of the game that I have. Yes. Uh, that was awful because I had Baldur's Gate, AC6, and Sea of Stars on there. And then both AC6 and Baldur's Gate wanted to update, but didn't have enough room to update. So I could only play Sea of Stars, which is a fine game, but that was, that was it. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm up to. Well, I, uh, since the last episode have had three wisdom teeth removed. And so I went through that experience, uh, which was not as bad as I thought it would be. My recommendation is if you, like me, have been pitting off getting your wisdom teeth removed, even though your dentist or people have been like, you got to fucking do this, you got to fucking do this, just go do it because it's not as bad as you might think. Uh, I also had a kind of funny story that I thought I would share, which is I went to, I'd, I'd recovered enough to attend like a Starfield uh, party at the NRG facility. They were hosting something with Rockstar. The Beebs. The Beebs was there. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, I did not see him. Justin Bieber performed. No. Oh, no, no, no. It was the guy that is on the Justin Bieber track. Oh, I got lied to. I heard I heard it was the Biebs. No, no, no. It's the it's Kid Leroy who is like makes like a cameo on a Justin Bieber track. Well, uh whoever's Instagram story that someone else posted and actually watched or whatever whatever happened. Somebody yeah. lied. Okay, anyway. Yep. Uh, so while I was there, I met a lovely man who was like, yo, I watch your stuff all the time, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I work in the music industry and I have to ask you the question, what's up with why you like Olivia Rodrigo? And I was like, what? And I realized that the insinuation was I'm too old to like Olivia Rodrigo. And this person you are. didn't want to say it that way. And I had to explain like the whole thing that millennials love Olivia Rodrigo 
I later on, like, he seemed nice enough. We added each other on Instagram, and I sent him all these articles about millennials that like Olivia Rodrigo because it's a whole, it's a whole thing. But uh, that was my my boomer story from the past week that I thought I would share because I know a lot of people know that I like her. It was very funny that the Starfield event happened the night after. Like, I you decided that Starfield was too. Yeah, I rage quit Starfield. It was too shit to keep playing. I tweeted about it, and then the next, I woke up the next night, and everyone was at a Starfield event. And I was like, "Huh? You know, I don't think I was invited, anyways, and I wouldn't have gone even if I was." But funny timing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it I could have gotten you into it because about... a a mutual friend of ours was inviting people on behalf of Microsoft. But I don't. Whenever somebody asks me who should I invite to parties, I never say Mark Zimmerman because I know it's just a wasted invite. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if I, I, I might tell you I want to go, but nah. so I did. I tell you what, what broke me in Starfield. I guess since we haven't done an episode since then, have I we? saw you tweet about it, but go there. You said there was a mission that or a quest yeah. that was really bad. All right, I'm I'm a rant for like two to three minutes here. There's okay. a mission called the Crimson Fleet, which people say is like one of the better quest lines in the game. You know, in Bethesda games, like oh, the main story is not that good, which it wasn't here, but they're like the, the side quests are the good ones. You know, those those are the ones, the the faction quests. So. I want to do some bounty. I want to be like a, a pirate. I want to be a space pirate. This is a space pirate group of people that I'm trying to join up with. The initial way that you get into there is pretty cool. But the first fucking mission you do when you get to the space pirates is not anything to do with space piracy. The very first mission you get is like, we're going to go on a treasure hunt. X marks the spots, motherfucker. And the entire rest of the game is already a treasure hunt. The main story is a treasure hunt. There's nothing interesting about doing a treasure hunt. And you just fight fucking... Uh, aliens, you fight like little like rats coming out of the ground. They're basically space rats that you fight for this entire quest. And when you get there, just to show you how disjointed this world building is, you get to the pirate fleet. One of the first things you see when you board their space station is like one pirate shooting the other one to be like, "Yar, we're rough and tumble space pirates." And then the leader is like some fucking doofus who's all like, "We got to get the treasure, man. Our our organization's failing. We have no money. All we care about is money." But I'm going on treasure hunts. And all I want is loyalty. We care about money and loyalty, and that's it. And once you're in the Crimson Fleet, you can never fucking leave the Crimson Fleet. You know, that's like their whole thing. So you go on this treasure hunt. At some point, you get separated. You and this other guy in the Crimson Fleet get separated from the main squad. And as soon as you're separated, this guy's like, let's fucking mutiny, bro. And immediately, after coming from Baldur's Gate, I'm like, I want to say no, and I want to attack him. There's no dialogue option to attack this guy. So I, I click through the dialogue or whatever to like entertain his mutiny because it won't let me decide yes or no yet. And I fucking shoot him as soon as I'm out of the dialogue option. First off, you can't kill him. He's invulnerable because, of course, Bethesda has to protect him so that you can do the storyline. And second of all, the people who were still in range from the Crimson Fleet aggroed me. They, they decided that I was the bad guy. So I reload the save file. I don't do that. I go through the mission. You can eventually talk to the leader guy, but you can't tell him that this guy's trying to mutiny. The most you can do is be like, uh, he's lazy. You can like lie that he's lazy, but you can't tell him that he's mutinying. You do that, this guy gets kicked out of the Crimson Fleet. The thing that they, that they just said, once you join, you're a part of for life and there's no way out. But apparently, yeah. like, if, you, if, if you're lazy, they'll just kick you out. Which, they were like, we're bond, bo- word is bond, bond for life. Once you're in it, you're in it forever, gang. So like, fucking be ready. No. If you're lazy, they kick you out, apparently. I, I just couldn't tell the boss that this guy was trying to mutiny. I couldn't do it. So then... After that, it's like head down to the bar to talk to this guy and let him know he's out of the Crimson Fleet. So then you go down to the bar and you talk to this guy. And he's like, oi, what the fuck, mate? You got me kicked out of the fleet. Watch your back. I'll fucking kill you. I'll be coming for you at some point. And now I'm like, okay, surely I can attack him. No, still no dialogue option to attack this guy. So I once again, just like click through whatever. And I shoot him in the head. And again, I aggro the entire Crimson Fleet in the bar to attack me. I'm like... Bethesda, what the fuck do you think my reaction is going to be as a pirate when someone threatens my life? I'm going to fucking shoot him in the head. Second of all, I walked in here and someone shot him in the head. Like, I saw people shooting each other here. Third of all, you just said there's no way out of the Crimson Fleet. This guy's just walking out of here. And, like, you're pirates. You don't give a fuck about anyone who's not in the Crimson Fleet. So, like, the, the world building, the story, the inability to express myself through gameplay or make a decision, I was like, I can't fucking do it. And I alt F4 and I uninstalled the game. It was, it's so bad. It's so, so bad. So is it, here, let me ask you, is it bad or is it bad in relationship to Baldur's Gate 3? It's, it's bad by itself. Okay. Like you would feel this way even if you were not 
even if you had not played BG3. Because I, I know you, sp you spent a, a lot of your complaints were, in BG3, I could have, and I'm not saying that those are not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel that way. It's more just like, I'm curious how much Baldur's Gate has like crushed it, the ability for other games to do it their doesn't thing. Look, it doesn't look good for Bethesda that like when you play one and then immediately play the other. Yeah. But to be fair, Divinity Original Sin 2 had this level of depth seven years ago when it came out in 2017 or six years ago. The other thing is beyond this like bad writing, you could call whatever it is, and like the stiff face facial expressions and like all that stuff. The the core gameplay loop just doesn't function. I just tried to like the first mission you do, I just try and play it the way the game presents it. But like you you can't there's you have to pull up a scanner to like see certain things. But when you pull up the scanner, it's like this like reticule over your thing to like highlight things as blue for what you can interact with because it's all just everyday looking objects. Like I don't know what chest i can open versus what's just like an environmental object that's just there for like immersion you know so you have to have this scanner up but when you do it one you can't open doors anymore so like there'll be a cabinet and i'll see that there's something in the cabinet that i want but i, I have to take my scanner off to, to fucking open the cabinet and also you can't stealth while like if you're stealth while the, the thing's up you don't see your stealth meter while your scanner's up and then you also need to have your scanner up to use some of like the special tools to like manipulate people in the game and so, like, I'm doing missions for, like, this stealth company, and I'm, like, I have to be stealthed to target them and do this thing, but I also can't see if I'm stealth now. So I kept getting aggroed. You, you get encumbered just by, like, existing in the game. Like, the encumbrance system's totally fucked. If you just loot, like, even a minuscule amount of the loot that you will see, you'll get over-encumbered before you even clear 10% of a dungeon. It's terrible. And then, on top of that fact, when you go to sell this shit... The merchants only have like 5,000 credits and you make it like they'll, they'll be gone selling your first six weapons. So you need to run around all town selling to like eight different vendors and then you need to wait 48 hours for them to get their gold back. So it's not even like they actually limited it from like an economy standpoint. Like the whole game is like functionally impossible to work. Like, it, like the, the gameplay loop, just playing the loop that they present to you doesn't actually work. And it, it's baffling. All right, let's move on to actual League of Legends esports content uh, now that we've gotten Mark's latest review. Uh, actually, I'm going to promote a couple pieces of content I did, and uh, specifically one, which is uh, it's up on my YouTube channel right now. It's performing 10 out of 10, which is the opposite of what you want. You want it 1 out of 10. But we did a re uh, Drew and I did a really fun video where we reviewed the new uh, physical and digital editions of the World's Unlocked boxes. And it's a very different type of video that we did. I think we put a lot of effort into it. Uh, if you don't like, if you get burnt during the unboxing, you can use the timeline to skip to some of the reviews and stuff. But I, I would recommend people go check that out. All right. Let's talk about what's been happening. So one, Worlds Nothing. has that not officially Good started. Good show, man. Glad we got on and did this. Nothing else happened. Worlds has not officially started, but a match that feels worlds like has occurred in the past 24 hours. Mark Zimmerman was casting it and you might not have been able to tell because the stream was so fucked, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, that happened. Um, so we'll talk about GG BDS on this episode episode. We will uh, talk about Santorin retiring. Uh, and then, and I think some of the other stuff that goes along with that and a little bit more, uh, if there's any other topics, Twitch chat, please shout it out. I know we haven't done an episode in about 10 or so days, um, because I was out last week, but we, yeah, if there's anything that has happened in that time that we are forgetting, please let us know. I guess, did the cage stuff get announced that he was stepping away from being a cast? We don't normally talk about LEC stuff, but I feel like it's somewhat relevant to the, the whole co-streaming stuff. I think I mean I think that I got announced in the last ten days, so that's maybe something we can we can discuss. I forget, but uh, yeah, Prince. Oh yeah, Prince leaving uh, FlyQuest. I don't know if it's been confirmed yet that he's going back to uh, play outside of the LCS, but we we shall see. Uh, Mark, what's your sort of hot instant reactions to the GG BDS stuff? That stuff you couldn't say on air last night. Uh, I mean, that fucking sucked. I think we can say that as NA fans. Um, I will say if you, I, I think a lot of people said 
Gigi was favored. I think what people forget about is the conditional that came after that, which is Gigi is favored if they play better than what we saw in the playoffs. If regular season Gigi, if spring Gigi, and if you watch Gory walk back forward into an Oriana after he just used his ultimate to escape and he's at like 20 health and then dies and flashes in the middle of dying, I think it's fair to say that was playoffs GG, which is what we said was the conditional for why they would be favored. So I think, uh, you know, people get hyperbolic online. That's fine. It's all fun games. Uh, so that would be the bigger thing is like, I think this series was like from the pers- closer from the perspective that like it's hard to know who's going to win because you haven't seen these people for a long time. Uh, and I don't think Golden Guardians look very good. I think they looked like that version of themselves from playoffs that was losing to most North American teams as well. Yeah, I I don't know. I expected at least it to be more competitive. I know that there were a lot of doubts about them, but you know, given them given so many weeks of time before they they came back to the stage. You really would have thought that they'd put up something more than a fight where they just kind of got rolled. Um, and I don't know. It's so funny. I was really excited about this match. It makes sense that I, as a North American fan, would now feel bad about the match. But it it's so... It's so <laughs> I feel like the fact that it was watchable during North American hours, I wonder how many people were like, oh, you know, like this is 9 o'clock. I'll tune in and maybe if this is cool, like I'll watch some worlds this year. And then you just tune in, you see golden guardians get clapped and you're like, all right, everybody, I'll see you in January for the start of the 2024 LCS season. You know what I mean? Like how many people were just like, like they're on the fence and then this just sold them like, fuck it. Don't even bother this year. You know, like I, I feel like it's so funny. I, uh, it set, it sets a tone for sure. You know, anybody who had, any aspirations or hopes for North America this year? Uh, no, I mean, like, I, a lot of people, like, at, the, at around the, the Dublin office were like, you know, because I cast that series, like, how are you feeling, man? You, you good after that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that goes in one ear out the other at this point as a North American fan. Like, that doesn't change anything. I mean, I'm, ha- I'm happy for you that it does. I think, for me, I... I still struggle. Like, I it, last night, you know, because I have the shared wall with Kobe where he's in the other room and he was watching with his friends and I was watching with mine. And after it was all done, he just goes like, Oh, I can't believe we just got slam three. Oh, uh, and you know, it's just, I feel like, I feel like North America losing is not as much of a surprise, but whatever, it's just that embarrassing. Um, it's really rough. And then you see all the like revisionist history, people that come out of the lines and they're like, like Kelby, for instance, in our group chat was like, I don't know why anybody thought that this was going to be any different. Like, when have we been better than EU? And I'm like, no, no, no. That's like the the sort of trope. But we really have been fairly even and competitive in terms of results and competition over the past couple of years. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, I think EU's favored. I think there, I think there was a comment that was pretty funny in the red thread that was like, I'm shocked that Europe is better than North America for the 13th straight tournament or yeah. <laughs> something like that. And it's yeah. like, wrong. I think there's like times where it's close, but I don't think there's ever been a definitive time North America has been better than Europe. Even yeah. like, even EG beating Mad Lions, which like was cool. People forget EG was our third seed. Mad Lions was their fourth seed who didn't even really want that fourth seed. Like the, they, those players themselves on Mad Lions were like, yeah, we don't deserve this. We're just getting it because, you know, the Russia team doesn't get to go this year, you know? And they just like got handed it. Yeah. Um, so like even that win is like it wasn't really an even fight, whereas this was both regions fourth seeds and they got smoked. So, yeah. 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 All right. Well. If uh, you want to do the spiel, since we're at a weird time, Mark. Yeah, so if you haven't seen this show before, it's your first time, you normally tune in. Uh, this is actually a live call-in show. So I'm spamming uh, Twitch chat with the Discord link. Go ahead and uh, join up here. Once you click that link, you can join the pleb calls or sub calls voice channels. If you're going to post a topic, you have to do this so that I can pull you into the waiting room when I like your take. So go ahead, join one of those voice channels, and then up above in the Pleb Topics text channel, 
that is where you are going to post your take. So write in whatever it is about worlds, about gods, about Santorin, about Prince, about any of these topics that we're talking about. Go ahead, post your take there. If we like it, I'll pull you from that voice channel into the waiting room. We'll hang out until it's your turn to go on air. Yeah, I should I should point out, as you referenced just now, that we did get the music video and the anthem and all that stuff. And while you know, I don't think we're going to do half this show about that, if somebody does want to call in or have some sort of take about it, I think that would be super fine. All right. Super shy, super shy. Yeah, Numi points out, do not leave the voice call. Mark gets mad. And if you are a sub, first off, thank you for being a sub. Uh, it's, I learned the lesson all streamers learned when you don't stream for 10 days and uh, lost, Bye -bye, I think, 20% 20, 20 of my subs. So if uh, if you are a sub, feel free to become us. Or if you aren't a sub, feel free to become one. But you can also sync your Discord with your Twitch to get access to that subtopics channel where things move a little slower. And we try to get some folks in from that channel assuming their takes are not dog shit all right uh mark is looking for those that's what we do here in na baby dog shit mark is looking through takes right now and filling up the waiting room and while he's doing that we're gonna give some shout outs grab one of them okay sure uh to some folks who did sub tidy cats marketing jordan magnarius and crayon yeah, so I will be leaving for Portland in two days, and I will be going to the first two days of Command Fest in Portland. Uh, for those who want to hang out with me, maybe play some games, Command Fest Portland, this weekend, go check it out. Um, and then while you're at it, if you live closer to Salt Lake City, go check out MTG Summit, which is later this month in October. Uh, they have a bunch of cool VIP experiences if you grab the VIP badge. Uh, but the, I will be there for all four days. I'm coming back for, from Korea right around that time. So, And they offered to uh, host me as a, a guest for that event. So please check out MTG Summit. I'll be returning there. But Command Fest Portland. But I'll be leaving on Sunday morning very, very early to fly to Korea um, to, to cover media days and the beginning of asset days. We are hopefully locking in a partner that will see me doing some more world content. We'll see. But some somebody popped up out of nowhere uh, here in the last week or so. So hopefully we'll get them going. But yeah, I would love to see you guys in Portland and Salt Lake City. And if honestly, if you're in Korea, let me know. Um, if you watch the show and you're going to be attending Worlds uh, while I'm there, uh, that would be super cool. I'm here. Sorry about that. I was... I was finagling the, the order to make sure no, I, it was it was literally perfect timing because i was discussing uh my travel plans and all that stuff so i was feeling all right caller what's your name and where are you calling from hello i'm reassure and i'm calling from toronto ontario canada reassure calling from toronto what do you want to talk about on the show so my take is that just because golden guardians got kind of smoked in uh, our first a game uh we shouldn't stop supporting the other na teams at worlds but you know we have to be considerate that we are kind of the fourth region at worlds this year all right do you want to elaborate on this a little bit uh sure so from i'm from toronto and uh i'm a big hockey fan traditional sports and every year uh i've been supporting the toronto maple leafs and I'm just saying, NA has been performing bad at Worlds for maybe 10, 12 years. Not too bad. Toronto went on a 19-game playoffs losing streak. So I'm just saying things could be worse. And just because we don't do well doesn't mean that we should stop supporting our players. Well, I mean, when you put it like that, you know, like Boston has had like an 80-year drought or whatever it is for the Red Sox. The uh, Was it the Cubs or uh, someone was never winning white Sox, i can't remember some one of them one of those fuckers never won in chicago uh so you're right this is the beginning of what could be a millennia long or a century long excuse me losing streak i don't like that that doesn't sound fun um uh, by the way shout out as as you're discussing with supporting other worlds teams we see steve uh from team liquid hanging out in the chat so i'm sure he <laughs> appreciates this take uh so rea your name is Reassure, right? That's what it was? I love that yeah, you're trying, trying to, to reassure us that we should continue to support. What uh, do you? What makes you think that we are the... What, I guess I, let me ask you this. You say, even though we're the fourth best region in 
at Worlds. Is that because is that drawn from your watching those games last night? Do you think that like we should look at that and the takeaway should be okay? Well, clearly we're the fourth best region if we're going to get clowned on that hard. Oh, uh, I've been watching uh, League of Legends professionally since around 2015, and just over the years, it's kind of built this standard that NA is not not necessarily not as good as europe but definitely the performance at international events is not the same as theirs sure it's like those <laughs> those kids you know, it's like i'm not bad at that subject i'm just bad at test taking like yeah north america is actually better at league of legends than europe what you just don't realize that we're just worse at international performance yeah we just perform worse on stage at international events but we are better than them yeah. competitively yeah yeah, yeah. And if we exactly. ever got a way to prove that, that didn't require an international event, people would realize that we are the better team. It's just not great at this. Did you see what Huki said, though, before the series? You know, in his interview, he was saying that, like, they're not worried. They should easily beat BDS. And he, he was right. They just can't perform on stage. Right. Exactly. That's, that's what it is. That's the mega fucking hope right there. That is the, that is the town uh, vault of copium that you can just take uh it's the right. evidence stash from the police so yeah i this kind of goes back the rest of your take kind of goes back reassured to what i was saying at the beginning of the show which is i wonder how many people tuned into that match and are now just like fuck watching the rest of of worlds but that's not your takeaway and your takeaway is just because sometimes you gotta support a team for uh for a very long time or a region for a very long time before they they can do it for you it's not even if they can do it. It's they're our boys. We got to support whether they're winning or losing. Doesn't matter if they win at the end. Uh, I'm still going to tune in, watch, show them the love. What he's saying is we don't need no fucking fair weather fans out here in North America. Fair, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I get that. I he, Let me put it this way. I do think, okay, the question is, what does supporting look like, Reassure? Do you, people need to tune in and watch these games? Do they, should they be, are you going to be staying up or waking up early, I guess I should say, to catch the you know Team Liquid games or the Cloud9 or NRG games? Uh, unfortunately, no. I have to work, so uh, sleep is required for that. But uh, definitely not going to be losing faith in NA as a region over you know just losing a couple games at international performance i think regardless of if we go do the whole zero six again i'm not going to stop watching the lcs it's not going to affect my overall view of the lcs as a region yeah i mean to to his point you know like if you're a fan and you just want to support north america you don't have to wake up and watch it live i think just like posting good vibes cheering on the players, tweeting nice things with them. Good luck in your match today, you know, whenever you can, or if you're on Reddit and you leave a comment, you know, go for that kind of stuff. You don't have to... Uh, you don't have to subject they, yourself to the losses. Let them let them do that. Well, you don't have to do it live, and you, you certainly can't, don't need to, like, say that you think they're going to win. You can just be like, hey, good luck. That's what fans do in sports when you're cheering. You're like, give it your all. Get out there and fight, you know, like, fighting. You don't need to be like, yeah, Licorice is about to dick at him down. It's like there's there's two sides to that fandom. Yeah, yeah. I I think uh, I think that yours is a, a noble and fair suggestion. Reassure. I feel like the people who are planning on supporting them will continue to do so. The people who don't, I don't. Know. I feel like we've already wa lost a lot of the people who are not interested in teams that are not top tier you know they've they've already decided to move on so i think it's i think we've lost those people a while ago and well i think fair, the, but, oh sorry mike no no you, you go first uh and you know if you know if we do catch our win i'll be here waiting and uh it'll be even more hype when we do yeah very good i think my thing that i was gonna say is like there's always new fans churning in, and it's always someone's first world championship as an NA fan. Um, so Travis and I are jaded. We're joking about it. You know, like emotionally, neither of us were probably that big of like that hit that hard. But if you were like your first or second year as an NA fan, you're like, ouch, 
ouch, I, that wasn't even competitive. We got we got destroyed. That probably doesn't feel good. As well as if we did beat Europe, I think the North American fans who might be jaded like us would suddenly have a little bit more uh, interest potentially. So that is unfortunate. Yeah. It's in my second year. Yikes, says Princess Kiyami. <laughs> Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome. Uh, now you get First to watch them lose <laughs> at terrible times for your your sleep schedule. All right, reassure. Thank you for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to the next caller? Uh, yeah, I'd like to shout out Alienware. I'd like to shout out you guys for making my drives to hockey so much more interesting. Uh, and also a special shout out to Mark. Last night was rough watching you on stream, man. That must have been really tough with the other EU casters. Oh, uh, I had to. It was a lot of fun. I actually did enjoy it, and I'm happy to like ham up the depression on camera uh, for for the memes. And so like I knew that they were gonna like do their dance or like jump into each other's arms and stuff like that. Like, uh, and I I know that when that happens, I need to like look extra dejected for that freeze frame, which the Lowly Sports website or Twitter account had a lot of fun with the yeah. X account. Excuse me. Yeah, you can say Twitter. I don't. I don't care. Uh, reassure, thank you so much for the call. Really, thank you, by the way, for shouting out Alienware. I just sent a montage video of everybody from the past year shouting out Alienware. It's a five-minute long video. So uh, it's really fun to have folks that do that. So thank you so much for the call, and we'll catch you next time. Okay, thank you, guys. All right. I did add somebody to the waiting room, by the way, Mark, because I, I want to see you fight them. So... Um, uh okay i'm gonna can, stick to the order for now yeah yeah. you I'll, do I'll whatever start. order i don't i don't mind i just at some point in time all right thank you to where are we magnarius uh crayon the lotus skidnich uh 86 america vespucci chimera coco de luna and frost queen ash thank you everybody for the subs. Okay. We got Ex Excelsior is here. Excelsior, where are you calling from? I am calling from Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. And what do you want to talk about on the show? I want to talk about how, at least to me, it appears that the LCS bracket did not select the fourth best team in Golden Guardians. I, I feel that their playoffs run really demonstrated a lower level of performance than the, the regular season. But we're regardless of whether it did or did not select the fourth best team and whether UG would have done better, it was still, in my opinion, the biggest collapse that a, a, an LCS team has had going into Worlds. I get that it's the Worlds qualifier. Um, basically, in the history of the LCS, the, the difference between the regular season and everything after that was, you know, they lost 3-1 uh, to NRG in a pretty bad series beat dig which i guess is fair and then lost out to tl excelsior you're getting we're getting your discord pings uh through the microphone so everybody listening to this is going to think that they're getting discord messages uh, everyone just got a message actually that is what happened everyone oh, did yeah. indeed get a message system wide it's the uh, emergency alert the u.s emergency alert like the text messages they're now sending discord messages as well um so Let's start with the second part first, because I already, I as soon as you said it was the worst, I was like, I looked at Twitch chat, and the first thing I see is zero six, and I, I really do feel like the TSM collapse. You know, they were our first seed. It was they just lost and lost and lost. It wasn't even, you know, it wasn't just across one day or one series. It was just a zero six. I feel like that is at least in the recent memories of people going to be a worse thing than golden guardians losing in sort of this like uh monkey match with the, the Simpsons meme and the day before yeah. worlds or whatever. I, I don't, I don't think that it's the, the biggest collapse ever. I don't know if you feel differently, Mark. No, I definitely don't. I think the TSM being the number one seed, the zero six, uh, w was much worse. Um, I think this doesn't feel great. I think there's a lot. I, I see people talking about it right now. I, I think there's people who, uh, and I, I am not like, I'm like 99% sure not certain on this. I could be the 1% wrong, but like people are, especially on in the Reddit thread, are like really overstating the practice difference that these teams had. And like they're trying to make it sound worse for Golden Guardians than it was. And like I don't really care if people are memeing, but I think there's actually just a lot of misinformation. 
about that. No, because like, people don't understand make... logistics, right? They're just sort of like a game ends, and then you just start. It's like a progress bar. You just start filling it up in terms of practice, and that's not. You can elaborate more on this, Mark, but I think yeah. that's kind of how people think about it. Yeah, they're like, well, Golden Guardians finished their season first, so then they must be scrimming amazing teams from now until when they play BDS. And what happens is actually um, everyone fucks off, and you have no one left to scrim because you can't convince the other world-bound teams to scrim you right now, and all the other teams disbanded. Uh, so they don't really have – like that month – bonus time you, it's like really hard to get value out of you have to do the mcdonald's scrim roster stuff that bds was talking about uh, people that they were scrimming i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure golden guardians got korea one or two days before bds i think i think because, that's probably true yeah I, I, that's what i heard because there's no one to scrim in korea if you go super early um i mean like maybe you can get the korean teams if they're practicing but you also have to wait for like the right patch to come out um, and stuff like that. So like, you you can you can do that. And as Raz said, I think Golden Guardians actually started their scrims after BDS. So like, you can actually make the case that BDS playing a month later into the or like however long it took for their regional finals to wrap up actually gives you better practice because you're scrimming against teams who are still in the hunt and in the proper practice environment for that month long time. So like, this idea that somehow like Golden Guardians had this massive advantage in prep because they their season ended earlier is actually wrong. Like it actually sucks dick to have a month off that you have nothing to do in. Um, now that said, I know this sounds like cope, so I'm gonna state it flatly. It didn't fucking matter. All right. <laughs> Golden Guardians was booty hole. I don't care about what prep sob story I'm telling you right now. It does not matter at all. I'm just saying that the like. That the, the idea that somehow Golden Guardians was advantaged in this matchup at all is not true. Yeah, I think that's something I'm saying. What we often try to do on this show is not necessarily be like, oh, the emotions you're feeling are wrong, but sort of try to give additional context because people don't, hey, yeah. understandably, e they e tune in and they watch a game and then they go off and they do their, their work and their job and they hang out with their friends and they don't have this, like how this all works. Uh, for reference, Golden Guardians tweeted on their account on September 23rd, LA to Seoul. So around that time. And as soon as you said this, Mark, I knew when you're like, oh, they got to Korea, you know, only a little bit ago or something like that. I immediately saw people in the chat being like, yikes, how did they do this? Why did they get there so late? Blah, 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 blah. And it really goes into what Mark was saying is that like, you can't just decide the day after finals to start scrimming the best teams in the world. Surely T1 will work. give us scrims the moment we get to Korea. Surely they'll have other things going on, such as Asia fucking games with uh, Faker or like whatever else is going on in their ecosystems during this time period. Like you don't just get to like show up and insta get scrims with the best teams in the world because now you're in Korea. The solo queue is better. That's a case you can make. There's like arguments you can make, but um, you know, teams are also still have to operate financially responsibly, arguably. You know, like there's these things where like, Spending a month in Korea not scrimming and just playing solo queue is like kind of a hard sell. Uh, you know, so I'm not saying it would have mattered either. Like, I, that's my point is I don't think it actually matters. I think both teams came in and they got similar levels of prep and experience. And yeah. then uh, BDS is just way fucking better. Yeah. You know, like, I, I don't, don't it, it's hard for me to look at to feel like, oh man, if only Golden Guardians had had one more week of scrims, they would have thrashed. BDS or something, you know, like I just don't feel like that's how this would have played out. Um, it is not yeah. progress and skill is not that linear, I guess is a good way of putting it. So, well, yeah, clearly because fucking Golden Guardians fell off a cliff. So that, that's the first take, right? Yeah, the the first half, first half. The, that was the second half. The first half was that Golden Guardians were not even our fourth best team. Of, of the two copium takes, this one actually feels more cope to me. Oh, yeah, I agree. Excelsior, you want to elaborate a little bit here? Because you, you hinted at EG, I think, in your you know, that EG was a better team. I, I think there's a reasonable chance that EG would have beat this weakened Golden Guardians team in playoffs had they had the chance to, to play for fourth. Yeah. I, I also... Oh, I'll, I'll defend myself here. I also don't think that's the point. I think the point is that, man, it felt bad sending a fourth team to Worlds, which 
by what we watched last night did not really deserve to even really be in the, the qualifier game. But and that probably like, would have been the same with UG anyway. I still that, think that Gigi's fifth, but... Is that a Tootsie Roll? Mark? No, it's po- it's poop. Like NA teams, I'm eating shit. All right, anyway. So... Your your take, Excelsior, I feel like you're kind of hedging your take a little bit. You're like, listen, Golden Guardians probably not even the fourth best team, but, like, they were the fourth best team, and EG was the fifth best team. But, like, it felt s- shitty to send them because maybe we could have sent EG. Like, do you do you actually believe Golden Guardians was the fourth best team or no? I think that Golden Guardians was the fifth best team. I think the result would have been similar if we'd sent EG. Okay. And I think it's just bad all around as, as NA fans. Gotcha. I, I'm, I'm not saying that, oh, Scrim, I, I'm not complaining about Scrims. I'm not complaining about, oh, the the bracket wasn't seated properly. We sent the wrong team. It just is not good. Well, I think every uh, all NA fans. I don't think it's a hot take to say that it's not good that Golden Guardians lost. Um, um, so, uh, we'll I will certainly EG, agree with you there. Yeah, I think EG was also collapsing at the end of the regular season, you know. So I didn't really have much m- more faith in them. So it's kind of a moot point, which you already said. I think it's it's true that a lot of the brackets are not constructed in a way such that the fourth seed had to prove that they are better than other people. Who who also might have lost a little bit earlier in the in the tournament, because uh, you would need like a gauntlet style losers bracket thingy to kind of do that maybe. Yeah, at a certain um, point in time, it just becomes what's the point of the regular season if you're like we're we're doing nothing, um, <laughs> we're doing everything we can to make sure that the top four are the best four in this exact moment, and everything before this uh, hardly matters, you know. That plus the fact that like the same thing is also true for Europe, you know, like BDS was getting more love. It felt like <laughs> from Korean fans than like European fans coming yeah. into the series almost, you know, it wasn't like BDS was this like surefire hot fourth seed that everyone's like, Ooh, they got a lot of talent. They just got to pull it together. You know, like, um, people have been hot and cold on BDS. So like, yeah, it wasn't like, I, I think both both regions were equally well represented as much as they could be in this series, and uh, the reality hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyway, thank you so much, Excelsior, for the call. Anything you want to shout out? Uh, yeah. Um, Dash used to shout out on the cast all the time to be good to each other, which I think applies. Um, and for the victims of the way the world is i'd just like to say that may their memories be a blessing thank you thank you for the call we'll catch you later all right moving on to the next caller mark is off greatness in the making says i just wish the fly quest experiment succeeded i mean i wish a lot succeeded thank you by the way to uh, 11 Orphan for the two gifted. Zemelkai for 30 months. Reassure gave a sub. Uh, Avura for 48 months. Four years. Holy shit. And then Irish Blizzard for 66. Samick is here. Samick, where are you calling for, from? Uh, I am calling from Lansing, Michigan. Lansing, Michigan. And what would you like to chat about? Um, my take was with Prince potentially leaving the LCS, I think it's time to stop the rotating wheel of imports here, which I know you've talked about quite a bit. Um, however, my take is it's not actually a team issue to solve. I think it's Riot LCS issue to solve. Oh, boy. Okay. Mark, why don't you get in? Because I feel like we all know what I'm going to say. Well, let's give the uh, caller a chance to elaborate. Sure. So just to be clear, um, it's not like Mark in the broadcast. It's more like the Jackie Felling and whoever the new commissioner is, which I don't think we have one. Um, so I think, um, you know, I think you made a video about this, Travis, where it's teams trying to be super competitive with bringing all these imports that that caused the problem. And, and I don't agree. I think that's kind of what teams should do is is stay competitive. But, you know, leagues can change to help the product be more entertaining 
Um, it's pretty common in T sports. You see it with um, the NFL. They changed rules. You can't hit the quarterback because that's a big deal. And the NBA just made a rule that if teams sit both star players in one night, that they actually get fined quite a bit of money because people tune in to watch them and, and it was hurting the product. So the NBA made a rule. You can't sit both stars. That way more people watch. And I think it's kind of similar with Riot that I think players coming in and out all the time and, and people fans not getting connected to them is, is hurting the product. And they need to change some rules to, to kind of stop that from happening. So first up, Travis, I think they can hear my Skype messages. Raz is saying that, um, which I think is a low priority to fix. I'll just stop typing at you, but just letting you know. Um, I like your point about like sometimes regulating bodies need to protect the environment from itself uh, because sometimes uh, companies and entities act in a way that is not beneficial for the long-term health of a system uh, and they, they act selfishly. You can make that case about a lot of things. So, yeah, regulations around teams and how they're operating from the governing body is something I think should be done in situations where it feels like it needs to be done. I like your NBA example. That's a really good example of like, yes, it is, you know, best for the league uh, or for an individual team to sit at star player once they've amassed enough wins that they're going to make a playoff push and you want to sit them so they're not getting burnt out or whatever. And like, I don't want them burnt out either. To be clear, you don't want your pro players breaking down and whatever but also uh fans want to watch the, the the good players play um uh so if north american league of legends having a problem where teams are too trigger happy with their roster signings and dismissals from outside of the north american ecosystem finding ways to limit that is a uh, good i don't think prince is the kind of pro player that I was not excited to have our league. I thought he was very good when he came over. He had a pretty good start. He was very charismatic. He did a lot of content. He put his best foot forward. I think he actually was very, very good. And I would be happy if he could stay in the North American ecosystem. I don't think he will. I think with the potentially lowered salaries that we're hearing grumblings about heading into next year, I think uh, a lot of teams aren't going to try to entice him, really, especially after having a pretty weak you know, ending to it. Um, so I'm sad that it's ending this way. I think he's not the best example necessarily of this because I would have liked to have seen Prince stick around longer. Yeah, the, the people are talking about the double if Prince shirt exchange was great. I think he gave us a lot of our best moments when, when he was able to uh, in spring split. And so that why like I, I am, I'm ashamed he's a casualty of the FlyQuest experiment just failing. Um, but it, you know, it is difficult for fans. If you did get attached to Prince, then now he's gone. Um, so yeah. Travis is still clicking around on his PC. It looks like. Yeah. yeah and I, dead. I like Prince in the league as well. Um, I don't think he was a bad addition and I'm not anti import. I'm just anti, you know, come in and, and leave. So I thought he was great. And I got excited to watch him play, but I could say the same thing about Perks and, and Sword Art um, and Alfari and, and, and a bunch of others. So, you know, I, I'm I'm very happy if we import great players and, and great talent. They want to come to the league. I just think Riot could do a better job of, uh, of saying if, if you're going to bring somebody in, you need to commit to them for a longer term, two to three years, et cetera. Yep. Yep. And we, we've talked about some solutions before on this on this podcast. I don't know if, if you've caught them, but definitely a, uh, a slot that you must assign to a pro player that teams get every two years or some, some, something like that. You know, I think uh, is a decent suggestion to limit the uh, fire and forget mentality. It feels like that exists right now. Um, uh, Travis is seemingly on fire. I will guess what his reaction would be to this call would be to tell you, no, um, imports are a great thing. He can never get enough of them. If anything, we should loosen the import restrictions and allow uh, the, the floodgates to open. And there, there's actually 
too few imports in North America. I think that would be his his take. And if he disagrees, he can tell me. But he he seems to just be nodding along. Podcast listeners, you can't you can't see it, but he's giving two big thumbs up as he tries to troubleshoot. Is he trying to talk into a webcam microphone? Yes, I am. Hello. Oh God! Is it way too loud? Uh, it's not the volume. It's just the quality. I think. Okay. Um. One second. Maybe it's the volume as well on X Split. At least for, through Discord, it wasn't too bad, but it okay. sounds like people I, are. I think I fixed it. Um, let me fix it on Discord as well. Yeah, there's been a weird bug. If anybody knows how to deal with this, um, where ever since I reinstalled this, my uh, my focus right um, microphone stuff just like crashes, and then I have to figure out how to get it back online. And then here we go. So I um. I agree and disagree with Mark here. Uh, so I here's the thing: everything that Mark is saying is part of is is a continued example of the issue, right? So I agree completely. Prince, great player, came in, had a phenomenal story. Obviously, it kind of flopped at the end, but um, oh, I got to turn myself up. Uh, he came into the league, had a great story. It kind of the whole thing kind of flopped at the end, but even then, there were all these great moments. Again, I agree with Mark. I think it's unlikely he stays in the LCS. I hope he does. But the fact that we are losing all of that is part of the example of why it's an issue. Because whenever a charismatic, handsome, charming, exciting, talented person like Prince comes into the space, people like Mark and Raz in the chat and Big Nonsense, who's one of the producers over there I see sometimes in the chat, these people do what I do, which is they start foaming at the mouth and they start going, oh, a great player to talk about. We're going to talk about him. We're going to do pieces on him. We're going to interview him. We're going to do all these things. We're going to invest in him, blah, 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 blah. And then you spend all your time on this player and less time, obviously, on other players. And then when they piece out, all that time was wasted within the context of the broader league eco esports ecosystem. So in some ways, one could even argue it's better to have a player that comes over, does nothing, and no one cares about, and sits on a bottom team and is uncharismatic because no one wastes any time trying to do anything about that player from like a content or investment standpoint. Travis, you've gone too far. You're saying you would rather have blue than Prince. I'm saying that it is less damaging to the LCS ecosystem. I think it's more damaging to never attach to a pro player because there's nothing to talk about that's exciting about them. No, because you, I uh, think you would invest your time, like the analyst desk and others would invest their time into a different player than Prince. It's the opportunity cost. No, but but you you were just saying that like, oh, it's it sucks because he had such a good story. But I was saying, well, you just don't want any imports at all. You don't want a blue to exist. No, what I don't blue? want players who are going to join and then fuck off which is what the vast majority of players are these days um and and i don't know like i'm trying to decide and we'll talk about this later when we talk about the santorin stuff if the changing amount of money that teams are going to invest in their rosters is going to be a good thing or a bad thing because the optimistic part of me wants to say okay nobody's going to pay a shit ton of money to bring prince over the Part of me that has just become jaded and frustrated with the league is like, oh, they're just going to find a player that nobody's ever heard of from a region that people don't really follow and bring them over for one year and then like get rid of them afterwards, uh, for lack of a better term. And that shit sucks. Like, it sucks for everybody. It sucks for the players. Like, I don't want, as always, you know, people I think will jump out of the, the woodwork to call this xenophobia or something like that. But like, I don't think it's great for the players whenever they come over here in their careers and they play one year and then they go back and have a hard time like finding a spot or, you know, they've been out of their ecosystem for a year. It's just like a fucked up situation for everybody. And like, I, I, I don't know. I just think, uh, okay, here's, here's the shit that, okay. 
ever, I see like Raz and Mr. Big Nonsense in the chat right now being like, no, this is this is a f okay. Raz says your critique on import players leaving after one year is similar to a lot of NA talent that comes up and only exists for one year. Except for that talent, oftentimes goes back down into the second tier system for whatever's fucking left of it after the owners nuked it, and actually develops and comes back up. Insanity is a perfect example of that. Prince is not going to go back down into the second tier ecosystem of league and then pop back up again like a year later and continue to the story. It is almost certain. I mean, again, I really hope he sticks around. But it is almost certain that this player will leave and not come back. Um, and, like, that shit fucking sucks. And 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 I, I know that it's also like, oh, it's not a waste. You're, you're cherry-picking the players that I agree with you on, says Raz. I, yeah, but you don't... I, I did a video, and I won't go find the fucking list, where I read out all the fucking names of players that have popped into the region and then left. And that list is a lot longer than the players who have... Uh, the North American talent that have popped up and then left. Like, I realize that there are players like Niles that have existed. But, like, how... Again, how often do... Sorry, I'm arguing with Raz for the people that are listening to the podcast. Because I appreciate Raz. Um, and respect him enough that I've decided to scream at him. But... Uh, the, the, how, like, how often do you hear about insanities? You know, like every now and then you get fucking Niski who comes over and then leaves and then does come back. But guess what he did right afterwards is he left again. Like it, it is just the, it is not a surprise to me. And I know correlation is not causation, but I feel like in this case uh, situation, there is at least something there. That like There's as the league has has gotten to a place where teams are more and more and more and more and more just like grabbing as many players from other regions as they can, that the league itself is also lost popularity. There's a power imbalance here, and we need to get Raz a microphone. Raz, I'm going to state my exact room number, the hotel that we're staying at, and you can come. Even though I know Raz is already in this hotel, uh, I doubt he has a setup that he can hop in and not sound normal. So I, I'm, I'm half trolling with this because I'm, sh I'm sure he's like butt ass naked in bed with his laptop on his chest. I don't want to know what your fantasies are, Mark. You can keep that to yourself. I, I imagine Those are your Raz colleagues. Okay? You I frequently imagine yourself. what Raz is doing. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're, we're splitting hairs as Raz says here. We devil's advocate. And we agree with a lot of the take overall. I think we agree that there's a problem with the import ecosystem. I think that the, the the interesting here that we're splitting here is was Prince a good import or not from a like league fandom perspective? And I think Raz and I am on the perspective that I think he still was good. I think biggest differentiator with Prince from some of the other people who have boomeranged out, as Travis loves to call it, is that uh, Prince seemingly wanted to be here. Um, there's a lot of pro players who are chasing the bag, so to speak when they accept their NA contract from EU or, or Korea. Um, and that didn't seem to be the case with Prince. And if he's not in, he, he, to be clear, he could still be in North America next year. We don't know. Yeah. I don't know what salaries are like in Korea. And if, if Prince is at a comparable price point to most North American 80 carries, I would expect someone to grab him, actually. Because while this didn't work in FlyQuest, maybe you give him another chance. Um, so we don't, we don't know yet. This is all hypothetically speaking. But I think... It, it was clear that he, he was invested. And if he doesn't end up in North America again, it's going to be because of like the opportunities not being good for him now here. And because the FlyQuest experiment failed, not that you know he, he didn't want to be there. And I think at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to stop teams from signing players who are import players, and it sucks when it fails. But like it's about protecting from the edge case. I think there's a lot of North American talent that don't get opportunities because there's just someone else you can sign, like we're talking about, like a Ruby type person, uh, player. Again, nothing wrong with Ruby, but like TSM's decision to go with him over Insanity, very strange. Just kind of like didn't make sense. Um, and Quid is another example that Raz just listed. Like there are some of these guys who they don't even seem to have the upside that are, are being initially signed anyways. And I think those are the ones that I care more about because those are the ones I think that are seemingly low investment from the team perspective that Travis is talking about where you just kind of like burger flip and hope they work out. And if they don't, they just go away. Whereas I think Prince was a legitimate belief and in investment in his future as well as, you know, being the face of FlyQuest and these kinds of things. So, you know, I think this is, is an interesting case of like, 
is Prince good for the league? I think we could even do a Twitch poll. Is like, even with the power of hindsight, would you import a Prince-like player again for 2024? You know, if you knew that he was going to come over, he was going to give you some of your best moments for a split, but then he was going to fuck off at the end of the year potentially. You know, like, would you sign up for that? I think a better example is Perks. No, Perks is a horrible example because he didn't want to be here. Oh, uh, I guess I guess I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, Perks, well, if Perks, Prince wanted to be here, then I hope he wanted to be here enough that he'll stick around for seventy five grand a year. Because, like, yeah, I, I, I mean, right, like, I mean, that's that's where we're gonna find out how badly he wants to be. And and I shouldn't say that if he's not here, it's because he doesn't want. To. Obviously, like, there's a world where nine teams do not try to acquire this player, but. I mean, you even acknowledged a little bit in the beginning, Mark, that like you were like, oh, with if the rumors are true around what people are offering, like I don't expect he'll stick around. Like, and and obviously, peep, it is not as binary. Decisions are not as binary. You don't choose a job solely because of the money. You choose it because of the money and other things, and that is, I'm sure, going to be a factor. But it it is true that like it it is hard to imagine that he sticks around for like league minimum even if he does quote unquote want to be here you know yeah because the reality is and to defend prince like a mindset that prince might have is if you're going to be getting the minimum anyways i'm going to go to the more competitive environment back in the lck you might love north american culture you might like the players but if at the end of the day your belief is that you want to go to the world championship and succeed with um people you know like you have a better chance of doing that in korea Already, there are NA prospects doing that. A young jungler called Griffin apparently just got signed to the T1 Academy squad, I believe. Um, you know, like, this is not just Korean players who are going back to Korea because they think it's the best chance for their future from a career performance perspective. That's happening with our own NA prospects as well, which is uh, uh, also a concern to look at. So the last bit I want to get here is that Samick was was suggesting that this is on Riot to fix. What would you like to see Riot do, Samick? Yeah, so I agree with what Mark said, actually, that, that Prince was good for the league. Um, and I actually liked him being here. The issue I had... Yeah, you can be with, wrong. That's he's fine. Just the la- okay. It's the latest casualty is the one and done. So uh, what I would like to see, not sure if it's possible, but in a perfect world, if Riot could set, you know, they set minimum contract i think they have to pay x amount if they could set a minimum year for imports to say okay if you're going to sign an import it has to be at minimum a two-year or three i think it should be three but let's say two-year contract and then on top of that you have to have a minimum guaranteed salary of like 70 percent that would to me as a fan would make it more exciting when we sign the princes and the berserkers because that's saying you know not only do we believe in this player but we believe in him for a couple years. He's going to be here for a while. And if he flames out and we bench him, we're going to have to pay a lot of his salary. So I think that would still allow the really good imports to come in. And what it would stop is what Mark talked talked about earlier. It'd probably stop the rubies that you bring over. And if he didn't work out, well, you can bench him, but you're still going to pay a lot of his salary and you're stuck with him for a couple years. So yeah, if I, I right, think the challenge is always you don't want players to end up in contract jail, which is I think a little bit of what could happen there. If oh. if you give the players the ability to opt out instead of the yes. teams, um, yes. maybe the that players works could leave, but teams couldn't bench them or, or cut them after a year and say sorry, it didn't work out. You know, we're redoing the whole roster, etc. Yeah, I worry about that you might be giving the players a little too much leverage in that environment and they can, they can abuse it. I mean, it's a great way to stop teams from signing imports. Cause I think at that point in time, they just wouldn't because the, the risks are too high for them. But, um, I, like I saw, uh, who was it that said, sir, uh, sir bunnies. I think it was in the chat said, right. Can't be in charge of fixing this. And your take is that they can. And I think part of the reason why I think they can is because they're also in charge of setting these fucking minimum salary caps that we're seeing around, or sorry, salary, not minimum, uh, salary caps and luxury taxes. And that to me is an acknowledgement of we have to help the teams from themselves. And this is a great example of the same mentality, right? Where I think teams cannot help themselves. Um, They, I think they have GMs on them that they have wisely hired with the express goal of go lift me a fucking trophy in the GMs very wisely 
uh, you know, their incentives are to lift that trophy, not to build fandom for the league, not to worry about the longevity of the team, not to worry about all these different things. It's to fucking win a trophy. And the shortest path to do that in their mind, oftentimes, and I think many of us would agree that this is sound reasoning, is to go find an amazing player who's already tearing it up in another region. Uh, it's certainly a lot faster and easier than doing the multi-year developed talent thing that other region or other teams have, have had to do like EG and golden guardians. And, um, and I think that those GMs are incentivized to win at any cost and that winning at any cost has led us to the situation we're in. And I, Prince just continues to be a thing. And by the way, shout out to everybody. I see you in these comments. Whenever FlyQuest tweets out goodbye, Prince, and I see you all hitting them with the fucking boomerang emote and tagging me on Twitter, I love it. Thank you. I am so happy. I, I'm very proud that I I began that. The only reason I have not boomeranged them yet is because I usually wait to find out if the players, you know, if, they, if it gets announced that uh you know prince is signed to some lck team or something like that and that hits twitter that's usually what i boomerang because we still don't know if he's boomerang yet but like i love that we need to create a boomerang emote for the twitch chat i feel like that's pretty good all it's right your, San- that should be your badge fuck, fuck the microphone get the golden boomerang like the bronze boomerang the yeah, silver yeah. How, boomerang. how much money you're boomeranging out of the region with um oh. samic thank you for the call anything you want to shout out um, shout out Alienware, of course. Uh, shout out future TGI sponsor. If you got a brand, get in here. Um, Travis does numbies. Uh, and shout out you two. Appreciate the show. Uh, I kind of cringed a little bit, but I do appreciate the support. All right, Savick, thank you for the call. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Damn, this tweet's doing numbers. <laughs> I love the damn this tweet's doing, uh, this is doing numbers and it's like two likes or like whatever. No, the- <laughs> I haven't seen that meme, but it sounds funny. No, it's the the fra- the use of the word. And I'm gonna gag a little as I say it, but numbies. Like, uh, I think numbies. it's like that a was... pet peeve for me whenever Sony does some kind of like they cutesify any fucking word. Mister Big Nonsense, who's in the chat, loves to do that stuff. Uh, like he calls them uh, subbies. He's like, I hope Travis gets some subbies on his stream today, and I just want to yeah. gag every time. Subbies, uh, cummies, numbies. Yeah, there he is doing it right now. It's in support. All right, whatever. Uh, let's actually speak of Alienware. Let's take a quick break and talk about Alienware. Uh, Alienware is fantastic. Let me show you all. This is what I will be bringing this M18 to uh, Worlds, where we will be doing the shows and everything off of it. This thing is a monster. I'm going to be able to, I probably won't be able to finish Act 3 of Baldur's Gate before I leave, but I will be finishing it on this wonderful machine. Uh, that Alienware will be providing us so that I can do things like stream, render 4K video, do all sorts of fantastic stuff uh, as I am on the road. And it's really great to have their hardware supporting us. Go check out the M18. I um, I know I shouted this earlier, but we did a whole video that I sent off to Alienware just showcasing everything from the first three months, or sorry, three quarters of this year. Um, your comments, especially when you do purchase something from Alienware and you give us some sort of proof, it, it's like really hard these days whenever you're working with a brand because you can sometimes show them like the impressions on a video or the clicks on a web page. But um, I think what you all have done for me and one of the things I really appreciate is you give me so much evidence and so much like real world testimonial stories of your support of, of my sponsors that it, it helps me because, you know, like I listen. The Ludwigs, the Moist Criticals, the, uh, you know, all these famous folks there, I'm not on that level. And so They're I have way to, better investment. I have to find ways in order to make sure that, you know, Hey, supporting me going to worlds or supporting hotline league or whatever, that is, that is really worth it. Uh, and so whenever you all, all do shout that, shout them out on the show or you tweet or you leave a comment, like I, I literally went through and looked for all the Alienware messages that I've received on Twitter for the, this entire year and like clipped those out, sent them all to Drew, did the same thing on YouTube. Like even if I don't interact now, like six months later, that thing's probably going into some big report to Alienware. So thank you to them and thank you to them for sending out or thank you to all of you and thank you to them for sending out 
this uh, wonderful M18 to me so that I can take it with me to uh, Korea as I leave this coming week. So uh, you can check out the alienware.com slash Travis. There's a link in the description on YouTube, also in the podcast notes if you're looking there. And then uh, Numi just pinned it in the Twitch chat. So thank you, Numi. All right. I think we're ready for the next caller. <clears throat> okay. Mark is off to grab them. Uh, also, shout out to subs. I really do appreciate that, especially whenever I'm gone for 10 days. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll shout them out here in a second. But Director Donut is here first. Director Donut, where are you calling from? Hi, uh, my name is Cedric, and I'm currently calling from Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. What do you want to talk about on the show? Uh, my my take is Gigi's performance highlights why Riot has not wanted more than three teams per region at Worlds. Oh boy. Okay, here we go. That we'll we'll pair this with the the Michael Don uh, take here in a second, Mark. But um, okay, after he's done, I'll pull Michael Don. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you elaborate a little bit on this donut? Uh, so at first, I'm just gonna very briefly because we've already talked about but talk about GG. But so at, it's cool to so as cool as it is to see teams and players at Worlds, um, and as excited as I, I and many NA fans were for GG, it was not a big surprise that the games went the way that they did. The games went very similarly to GG's games and playoffs. Uh, Gore specifically continued to make unforced errors, had troll builds. Uh, River's early pathing was not great, and BDS had him warded out from level 1, especially in game 1. Um, and we heard at the end of summer that GG was super burned out. Um, but the thing is, GG isn't a huge overall outlier when it comes to the 4th seed's impact at Worlds. Um, and usually the analysts, when you watch the World Broadcast, are not excited about their 4th seeds. So, um, and like in 2021, LNG lost in groups. Um, HLE made it out of groups, but went 0-3 in quarters. In 2022, MAD lost in play-ins. RNG made it out of groups, but went 0-3 in quarters. And DRX won Worlds, which is super cool, but a very big outlier. Um, and no one expected them to, and that's what made their story so cool, what made the Gods video so cool. Um, and then so far in 2023, GG boomed, and we'll see how BDS does. Um, I but feel it's like cool the thing see- is DRX just killed... Like, I remember there was a lot of discussion at Worlds last year about should there be four teams, and then DRX just like shut down all that conversation. And so that's why I feel like it's hard to bring it up just for Golden Guardians, right? Well, so that's that's why I brought up the other um, examples. So, I mean, it, it, only two other teams have made it out of groups um, other than DRX, and it was Hanwha Life and RNG, both of which immediately went 0-3. Um, and two of the three teams that made it out obviously were from the LCK, which has proven to be the best region in the world. So it makes sense for China and Korea to have four seeds. Um, I think it's cool to see more teams, especially if they do okay. Um, but it hurts. It also creates an opportunity for something like the GG thing to happen, where a team that's already been struggling and shown weakness to then just face plant in front of a massive global audience. Travis, do you want me to get Michael Don here to combo in? Are they are they making the same point? Or are they going to argue? No, they. I I like it. I like this because Director Dota has one take. And then Michael Don has like a more extreme version of the take. So we're so starting. I, I should, we're starting I should so, get Michael Don too then right now to hear no, the, no, the no, double no, no, down no. version. Let, let's figure this one really out. I tr- trust me. I think it'll work out well. Um, okay. Okay. So I, I mean, if DRX as a fourth seed should win, could win worlds. Shouldn't we afford Golden Guardians the chance to win worlds? Golden Guardians could have won worlds. It just didn't happen. I think I think that's possible, um, but I, like I said, I think it's an outlier. Um, and assuming that's going to happen, I mean, I mean, Here, I mean, we, why don't we just have five teams from every region? Then I mean, if we're going to give everybody a chance. Oh, but... Okay, okay. Why don't we have ten? Why don't we have twenty? I, yeah, I don't exactly. like just hand out, but... Why don't we just hand out ribbons to every team yeah, out of ten? Like... We don't do a world no. championship, Travis. <laughs> Here's here. Uh, so, director Donut, I think where i disagree with you is i feel like you think that the cost like the opportunity cost is is high here you're like we bring them and then they flop i think that the way that riot did this is very smart they don't even have to we like it's not like we had to watch golden guardians go through all all the way through plans and do all this stuff and bust her out there or maybe make it into swiss only to get fucking crushed every game and go I don't know, whatever the equivalent of 0-6 is in the new system. I think it is 0-6 because you lose three and then you 
have a best of three. Uh, it would be zero five if you went in. Oh yeah, because you lose the best of three. So best, yeah, yeah, zero yeah. five. And so I think the I would agree with you, Director Donut, if EU and North America were invited directly into. Oh, zero main... four. I can't do math. <laughs> Don't you? Isn't it? You, you... Zero two, and then you get zero two, and the best of three. Oh, okay. You okay. Can, the worst you can do is zero four. Ha 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 ha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So it is the it it actually is a still groups meme or whatever, um, so yeah I think uh, I think that's what where I'm I'm okay with it right it's like it is easy it's one night it's a best of five and then we're done with it so I think the opportunity cost is not as big of a thing as as you make it seem director donut I don't know if Mark if you feel differently. Um, no, I think that's, that's kind of where my head's at too. I don't think that you're, I think like, for example, this match, it sucks at any loss and we can all be sad boys, but look at the Reddit thread, 2,600 comments, you know, 15 hours ago, clearly there's a, a, a hunger for this kind of matchup. People enjoyed watching this. Um, I would have enjoyed it more if it was competitive, even if we lost, I think that's, that's the shitty part. And I think, um, if we're going to keep doing things like this, I think maybe summer brackets should be reevaluated to make sure that you're really sending the fourth best teams and that they go in there not just like losing a bunch of series and not looking very impressive. Um, but that's that's a different problem of how you're getting your fourth seed than the fact that it exists potentially. And to Travis's point about opportunity cost, um, we'll see what happens from here. But we say like, oh, we don't like these these fourth seeds don't get out of groups. Guess who else doesn't? Um, the entire region of North America, uh, the majority of EU teams these days, uh, every minor region team. Uh, so I don't know what BDS is going to do from here on out, but I would expect them to absolutely hoop stomp plans. I bet they'll go through easily, and I bet they'll get to Swiss stage, and they'll win a game or two, they'll lose, they'll probably go like, one in three or something maybe unless they continue to level up i don't know who, who can say but either way if that's what they do that's still totally fine for a fourth seed um and it's not, to do that from a financial Dude, I, perspective it oh, doesn't okay. even seem like it's probably that expensive for riot to do this because they shove the analyst in a closet and then they run the stream off of a windows 95 machine so at least based off what i saw last night so i uh, tgi throwing stones in glass homes can't get his fucking microphone working he needs to plug in a a webcam microphone to get that thing working. Yeah, and the fact that this has still been a better production than what I saw last night when it's TGI versus Riot Games, I feel like that's. Uh, I, it's I a don't. Fair know. Fight. I, I think it's, it's okay resources. for me to throw those stones. Are you, it sounds like you're throwing Alienware under the bus, man. That they, they don't. They're not propping you up as much. No, as Riot not games. Alienware. Just Microsoft Windows is oh, okay. or Focus, right? I can't figure out if it's the mic or the so, or the. the operating system because the computer <clears throat> wasn't having this issue before um all right director donut do, do you mind do you mind if i yes say, add something real yeah quick? yeah um yeah. so like there's i just have a couple things um because so for one i think you're right about there being there obviously is a very large interest of especially like na versus eu that, that rivalry um people wanting to see oh, oh we actually are officially better etc i don't think i mean riot was very specific about saying it's not part of worlds um, I think doing more things not part of Worlds is an option. They're not mutually exclusive. Um, and also, say the fact that the fourth seed isn't probably going to make it out, I also don't think that that is necessarily saying that they should exist inherently. Because then why not then just put an extra, like instead of we already have we already have three representation of three LEC three LCS teams. Why not put an extra minor region team or something in there that is probably also not going to make it out of groups, but then then the PCS gets to have two teams in there, or maybe Loud gets to go on, or Rainbow Seven, one of these teams that doesn't ever get to go to groups, then gets to go in and play any which I guess maybe is a slightly different take, but I just feel like that inherently them making it into it and then not succeeding does not just inherently mean that they should exist in that role. Um, but I don't know if that makes sense. No, no, it does. I think I think the question that you and the people at Riot need to answer is like there's a r inverse relationship between regional representation and competitiveness in the sense that like a Korean and Chinese fourth seed is better than 
a lot of other regions in the world. And their fifth seed might be as well. And like, do you want to start putting their fifth seeds in here? No, probably not, because at that point, you know, you're it's about trying to get the whole world to play against each other, not necessarily there's like a it's somewhere between the Olympics and also like the best competition in the world where you do want this level of regional representation. So to that question about why do an NA or EU four seed and not just knock them out of play ins, um, I think in the future that might be the case. What's what's kind of the elephant in the room right now is that the CIS is not allowed at riot events. Um, and this spot used to be theirs. So I think there's like a fill in that's happening right now by the fourth seed from the major region of NA and EU that in the future would not be ours. Um, the PCS and the VCS both get two teams already. Um, uh, CIS, I, I might be, I might be messing up the terminology. They, they've changed regions names so many times. Like apologies if it's not CIS anymore. It's called something else or like, uh, Turkey disappear. Like I, I forget exactly. Um, with e either way, that's where it started, at least with the mad lion situation with them getting their spot. Um, I, either way, this, this was not like initially a spot that was supposed to go to EU or NA four seed. Um, so point is, I don't think that this is the ideal setup. And I think it's fair to say I would prefer to watch just minor region and emerging regions teams fight in play-ins and the two best of them join the main stage and EU and NA four seeds don't need to exist because they're dog water. If that's your take, I can't necessarily disagree with it. It's just what you value, you know? Hey, director, that's, Donut, that's fair. thank you for the call. Anything you want to shout out before we go on to our next caller? Um, first, I just want to remind all North American fans that we actually currently have three teams in the group slash Swiss stage. So it's not time to press the uh, panic button yet. We actually have time, and actually because we don't have any teams in play-ins, we have time to refill our copium tanks and be ready for the three teams that we were generally more excited about at Worlds anyway. Um, I want to shout out my wife. I want to shout out Alienware. I'm going to shout out Santorin because he made me want to be a jungler when I started playing in 2020. Shout out to Travis for getting me into Magic, and shout out to Mark and Raz for representing NA on the broadcast last night. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. That was great shout outs, by the way. I loved all that shit. Thank you. We'll catch you next time. Thanks. All right. Michael Don time. Are you uh, going to grab him or do I grab him? You can, Well, you got to do the audio check. Uh, thank you to Irish Blizzard, uh, The Buster, Fishy, Filth Monk, The Worst Top, EU, Sweet Be Good, Sky G for two years, uh, Just Nexter, and Swede gifted a sub to Emily and to Raz. I'm sure he's uh, excited about that. I'm sure she's excited about that. Uh, Michael Don's microphone looks just completely open, uh, which is wild. So hopefully it's still working. Uh, Michael, uh, yeah, Michael, can you uh, mute your microphone when you're in here, or put a noise gate on, or something? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Okay, Michael, uh, where are you calling from? I'm calling from South Salt Lake, Utah. Hey, you are no longer in the middle of nowhere, Utah, right? The move has occurred. That is right. The move has occurred. All right, so I'm ready. I'm curious because I feel like you're about to say the thing that gets Mark to rant. So I'm curious how this will go. But uh, why okay. don't you share your take? Yeah, it's time for North America to lose a seed at Worlds. And when you say lose a seed, do we have, in your estimation, do we have four seeds at Worlds or do we have two or three seeds at Worlds? Because technically, we don't. We only have three seeds entering Worlds this year that have qualified in, right? So if we're doing this format, then our cert third seed plays uh, the f goes in play-ins, like fights EU fourth seed for play-ins. Gotcha. No, and that doesn't work. Uh, well, our because supposed you... second best team just got clapped by the supposed like fifth best team from Europe. So I think it works fine. No, I mean, like literally from a logistical standpoint, if you pull a team out of the main stage to put into this portion, you need to somehow find a way to promote three teams and redesign your entire playing system. So well, I think you can I do that. My, but yeah, Michael, who yeah. would you invite? I mean, that's the next question is who would you invite instead? Probably PCS first seed. I don't think it matters a ton. Maybe the fifth seed of whichever region won worlds last year. Okay. So you're suggesting that somebody else gets seated in instead. So that's how it would work, Mark. So okay. I'm going to close cool. the story. No, I was just making sure. Whenever people suggest things, I'm like, please actually think about 
the implications because you do need to cover that stuff. If you want to say PCS gets promoted, totally fine. Continue. Yeah, uh, this was definitely the worst North America has ever done internationally. Uh, even even the European analysts were kind of like, yeah, G Golden Guardians should be better here, but they weren't, and I think that says it all. Okay, so your suggestion is North America. This in, in your approximation, this is North America's worst of performance at Worlds. Um, and so, yeah, I think the challenge here is, what about our third seed though? Because like we haven't even seen the third seed yet. And so, in essence, you're looking at this and you're like, kind of because of Golden Guardian's poor performance, preemptively suggesting that North America's third seed is worse than PCS first seed or, I don't know, a fifth seed from another region, LCK or whoever you fill in. But um, we haven't even had a chance to watch them play yet. Yeah, I don't think it implies that though, because that would also imply that like PCS first seed seed is or pcs second seed is better than europe's fourth seed which is probably also not true well Based. i mean i guess this is this is why i want to hone down on what you think the problem is right now because if your belief is that you want it from a competitive standpoint that this was so embarrassing and he doesn't deserve this and that the pcs first seed should auto qualify um north america at Worlds, there's been times where like Flash Wolves and these kinds of things have done better internationally. But for like the last four years, North America three seed has done better than PCS, or and like the North America as a whole has done better than PCS. There's no evidence that the PCS should get seeded over the North American three seeds, like from a performance perspective. Yeah, so I think like, the last thing you could point to is probably last year's MSI, uh, but that's that's basically it. Yeah, and again, that's that's MSI, which like you know, if you want to include that, but if you include previous MSIs as well, they they haven't done a ton recently either. So like you know, again, I don't care if you think it from a regional uh, representation perspective. You want other things, like fair enough. But if you're going, if you're saying that NA's performance is so embarrassing, well, the reality is that at least what we've seen so far, the third seed from North America has never failed at planes before. Uh, they always make it through. You could stick them back down there if you wanted to, but there's no reason to think that like the VCS or PCS one seeds are somehow better representatives than the NA third seed. Um, yeah, I agree so, with that. It's mostly just wanting, like I, I not delusional. I don't think North America is going to win worlds. I don't think they're going to come close. I, what I liked about MSI was that we got matches where North America was playing against teams that they were close in skill to, uh, and they had some good showings. And then we got some. We got to see some games against teams that are obviously better than us, which I'm also okay with. Like if we got blasted by JDG, that's completely different than getting blasted by BDS, which is the point. Um, one other thing, quick before hopping on to that point, uh, you you briefly mentioned the like a, a LPL or LCK five seed. Is that something you actually want, or is that just like <laughs> hypothetically that they'd be a a stronger team than Golden Guardians. In this case, that is actually something I want because the LCK fifth seed is Hanwha. Uh, <laughs> so you, you have some personal bias. But like, I mean, systematically, that uh, it, it, you systematically think that's a better solution. Um, I think it's hard to say for sure because last year we would have said fourth seeds. Well, this was just in the last call, I think. Last year we would have said fourth seeds probably don't belong at Worlds because they're not going to win, and DRX won. So we could yep. say fifth seeds don't belong at Worlds, and then suddenly fifth seeds win. So it's it's hard to know without having like a consistently good format that consistently tests for the same things over long periods of time. Well, I think also the the problem with like the consistently good format in air quotes is like I don't think Han uh, excuse me DRX would have won Worlds at the time that they qualified, but then a lot of the champions that Zeka apparently is just the best in the world on became the meta, you know, and like the meta changed for Worlds, and then a fourth seed does become the best in the world. Like, I wonder what DRX would have done if the meta that happened during playoff time at LCK was actually the world's meta. Maybe they would have qualified as the two seed then. You know, like the reality is, is that um, there's a disconnect between qualification and the actual tournament. And that's a gap you can't ever really close. And so that's not to say that fourth seeds are unindicative or, you know, like who knows what's going to happen, but it is really hard to predict. predict. Um, um, 
you know, know what's the, the amount of teams, teams that you need to try and capture a region's strength. Um, so that, that small tangent on like the fifth seed thing, like, yeah, you don't really know to that point. Like, yeah, the fifth seed might end up being the best on that new patch that you end up going to. If like certain. Th- um, then you said one other point, but I forgot what it was. So I, I would need you to refresh my memory that, uh, on what you said about. Um, uh, uh, I'd rather get, about I'd rather get blasted by JDG than BDS. Oh, well, fuck yeah. I mean, it's more respectable, but like you can't pick the fact that you stuck sometimes, you know, like I'm sure Mad Lions would have preferred to also have gotten destroyed by uh, JDG last year, but they got destroyed by EG, you know, like I'm sure that didn't feel good. <laughs> you, you can't pick out what happens in the tournament, man. Like <laughs> In hindsight, yeah, I would have actually just preferred to have won the series now that you, you say it. It's not even really about winning either. Like if every game had gone the way game two went, I would have felt better about it. But they they beat us in 20 minutes, man. Like I don't. Yeah, it sucked. It sucked, Dick. I'm not telling you you have to enjoy it, but I'm just saying that like I don't think knee jerk tweaking a for like a, a format because some team was bad is necessarily the, the right thing to do. Because if you did that based off last year, Mad Lions having a bad fourth seed, you said, ah, oh, well, Europe's, Europe's fourth seed doesn't deserve to be here. Europe's, Europe's fourth seed is clearly just dog water and we'll never do anything in one of these international tournaments. We should just not include them. Uh, let's just give this seed to the, the VCS or PCS or whatever. Then you don't get BDS beating Golden Guardians this year. And you don't get this cool story for the BDS players and for BDS fans. Um, so, like, you know, I, I think it, it sounds just really knee-jerky based off this series, this side of the future is, is like, bad for them and i think it's fair to say systematically i want these play-ins to mean something else or like all i care about is competition so i actually don't want to even fucking any of these teams they should have to get through the, the the kr5 and the china five as well you know like you can debate what you want but just saying like this was an embarrassing performance so like let's hide from this ever happening again is kind of how this feels i i don't really like that because again literally this is what happened to mad lions last year they got it was it was the three seed like i said from eg it wasn't exactly the fourth seed so it was like slightly less embarrassing but like if you took away europe's fourth seed because clearly they're not good well then bds isn't even here to do this to us this time or something so um no i I very much like that the eu and na team fought for this extra seed that exists right now in the current uh play and format i guess it's more about like the way riot is uh doling out the seeds they're treating europe and north america like we are equal and i feel like bds kind of proved that the two regions are definitely still not equal well i think yes and no based off last year where eg slapped down mad lions you don't think that that at least raised the question of if na's fourth seed could could compete with eu's fourth seed yeah, and, I, like, and I'm sure that's why they did it this time because because of that best of five specifically. Well, I think there's also the like uh, win rate between the two regions uh, during group stage has actually been relatively close for the last two years. Um, I think EU has won an extra game or two. I also think like if you just base it ba- like it's it's a it's a one series sample size that you know like who knows what's going on with Golden Guardians, right? Like again, if you base it off of one thing you would never have given Mad Lion or the four seed from Europe a chance again because Mad Lions was so bad last year, right? Like, I think what this shows is that people really enjoyed this. Like, there's a lot of Reddit comments. There's a lot of people who, you know, were were excited about this match. Um, I think this was cool for our two regions to get best of fives where we have, this is like our fourth one ever, basically, you know, that in like a high stakes situation that actually matters, unlike Rift Rivals, which was just like a for fun, funsies tourney. You know, like, I think this is something that both these regions really like. Um, yeah, I still think this should happen. I just think it should probably it would probably end up being closer over time if it was North America third versus Europe fourth. All right. Uh, hopefully, my microphone and, and everything is working again. But uh, I I I think I'd like to see another one of these next year before we come to any strong conclusions. I think I'd also like to see how the top three North American teams do. Uh, Mike. Yeah, I I think. Oh, sorry, okay. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I I agree um, with just like a little bit more data because because uh, let's say Mike this happens again next year and EU fourth seed poops in NA fourth seed mouth then like yeah let's do three versus four or something you know what's up with the um, feces analogies with you tonight you're the one who asked about what I was eating and I gave you an honest answer don't ask if you don't like question uh, the, the what you get 
Yeah, it probably is a little bit knee-jerky. I'm, I'm still down, I guess, a little bit from the series. All right. We will catch you later. Anything you want to shout out? Yeah, shout out Energy DeMonte as always. I hear scrims have been going really good, so that's good. Um, and also a special shout out to the folks at Team Liquid Honda because they managed to send me a card signed by world champion jungler, the best in the world, Pioshik. He signed a magic card for me, so now I have his signature forever, and it's awesome. Here you go, Michael. Don't give up hope just yet because in a little over a week's time, North America will disappoint you again. So take this week off, rejuvenate yourself, rewatch some of Summer Split, start believing in North America again to have your heart broken all over. Oh, Piosa could never disappoint me. I'm going to see you at MTG Summit, right, Mikey? Yep, 100%. I'll be there. Okay, cool. Well, hopefully we see some other folks too. Have a good one. Catch you later. Yep, see you. All right. We have our next caller coming up here in just a second as Mark goes to pull them. Uh, thank you to Sky G, Sweet Be Good. Oh, no, I got these guys already. Uh, Rossinkin, thank you for the 25 months. And Smoke Dog, thank you, everyone, for the subs. We are at 897 subs. Can we get to 900? Let's find out. Lotus is here. Lotus, where are you calling from? I'm from Lake Elsinore, California. Lake Elsinore. Uh, very close to where Olivia Rodrigo was born. Anyway, what do you want to talk about on the show? Um, I had two takes, and I think it was the latter of the two, um, but I believe that Team Liquid is going to do the best of uh, the North America teams so far. That All is right. indeed what I pulled you for. Okay. What? Uh, why do you think this? Uh, I think just watching the games last night, um, when you kind of saw a chaotic team versus one of our more stable teams in Golden Guardians, I think that... Team Liquid falls into that kind of chaotic play style. And I think as a result of that, I think they'll do better than any of the other North American teams that we have. You think the other the other teams do not fall into this chaotic play style? No, I don't think so. All right. So, Mark, first off, is the premise of chaotic play style equals better success, better chances? Do you think that that is a, a fair premise? Yes, yeah, sort of. Um, I think like the, the, the premise being that, you know, if you have good early games, which team liquid tends to do, and they have also slightly interesting picks with APA doing some weird stuff, you know, uh, maybe they can surprise some of the teams that they would normally lose to. If you play a more traditional style, blah, 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 blah. We've all heard this argument before. I think there's some merit to it. And, uh, yeah, I, I'll buy in that, that team liquid can do some of that. So the next the next premise is, do you think that that's enough to make them the best team from our region? I don't know if it's enough to get them out or anything like that, but I think the odds of them doing better than like someone like Cloud9 uh, or well, even Energy. Like I think Energy has a little bit of that, but I don't think because like for like Summit, for example, he's like one of the like he makes a ton of stupid decisions on almost every single game that he's in, but. You know, sometimes it's like for better or for worse. And I think that kind of um, like random playmaking stuff that he'll do, kind of like how Adam did last night, just really throws maybe a wrench on some of the other team's plans. Um, I think this is a... I think what's cool about Swiss right now is that this is more measurable than it probably was in the old days of four groups where they're not even in the same pool of teams that they're playing against. And there's still some randomness about who each team is going to play. Um, but who goes further in Swiss, you can say, was theoretically at least the best North American team. And so this now has a kind of verifiable prediction that you're making here, which is one of the uh, necessities of science is that it's actually falsifiable. You're basically saying that Team Liquid you think will go the furthest in the Swiss stage, even if they don't get out, they'll get two wins or, you know, whatever. Um, that's cool. It wasn't GSL groups before Joe S. It was, it was not that it was double round Robin shenanigans with seeding. That didn't make sense. Seeding still doesn't make a ton of sense, but at least now anyone can play anyone. Uh, here. I don't think that they will be our best performing North American team. I don't think I believe that. I think a lot of the strengths that they have are kind of there for a lot of the uh, NA teams. 
Like, I actually think NA has done a, a good a good job, in air quotes this year, in, respective to our own region, at least, of being more proactive with their playmaking, being more aggressive. I think C9 is generally aggressive. I think NRG is generally aggressive, and I think Team Liquid is generally aggressive. Even Golden Guardians, who fucking sucked, uh, were a more aggressive playmaking-oriented team. I don't think there were very many sit back and do nothings. I think even EG, uh, when they were playing well, were aggressive. Um, I think they kind of maybe maybe failed at, at that uh, later on the season. But yeah, like the, the the pick better scaling and just like vibe out Team Liquid from the 2020s is gone. The old TSMs are gone. And so I think um, these strengths that you're talking about potentially about like just doing crazy stuff and maybe winning a game, as long as they're not playing scared on stage, I actually think that uh, all three of our teams kind of have that going on. I think you can make some points. I like Summit in particular is extreme variance in his if he makes these big oopsies or not. And if he doesn't make one of these big oopsies plays, skill wise, everyone acknowledges he's the best laner in the world. And like Piyoshik has won a world championship. So like they, they might in some sense have a higher ceiling. You could try and argue for like team higher player. variance. Yeah. Their, their variance is higher. They, they do the, the dumbest stuff between the three teams. But if they are really vibing, maybe their ceiling is higher. Yeah, and I also get the same thing because, like, yeah, exactly how you mentioned how Summit is like, if he's playing well, he's probably the best top laner in North America. And I think Licorice was one of the more stable ones. And it meant absolutely nothing in any of the games last night, I think. And since it, exactly like in the Swiss stage, you can't really prepare for specific teams as well. Like, I don't know if people will, um, like, maybe kind of ignore the kind of player that APA is, where he just kind of chooses literally like off meta shit sometimes um i think if there is like any need for stability i think core jj has a lot of good shot calling that maybe it's not that been that great this year but i don't think that kind of stuff goes away i i just yeah i'm excited to see how apa performs i am a little worried for him i mean i this is a player who is really really new to big stages and is now about to go play against the best players in the world um and so I want to have faith that he can he can show up, but like I'm not yet ready yet to consider him like a superior asset to what uh, the players that are on a lot of these other teams that we're sending. I think that we haven't he hasn't been tested enough yet for me to have that level of confidence in him. Yeah. Uh, Travis, did you know that he's the highest rated in the solo queue though? Yeah. I I have learned <laughs> over time know? that like that is not always demonstrative of capability to perform in a pressure Travis, moment on stage. Travis, did you know that like just a year ago this kid was basically playing collegiate and amateur and stuff like that? God, uh, I think just, like, I think to, that's a little bit more on my a, side of of concern. New to academy? No, I'm just talking about the meteoric rise. He makes worlds in his first split subbing in to the LCS when a year ago he wasn't even playing in like the tier two ecosystem, I'm pretty sure. And then he's, he's making worlds. Come on, man. More evidence too, I think for APA in particular is like, when did he do the best when he was in the LCS? And it was his Before first... people figured him out. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. no, but even, even so, I, if, if you're gonna use that as a logical statement, like before people figured him out, like how many people are gonna actually figure him out in Swiss stage? No, you like uh, would you try and figure out, you know, like a Chovy or a Faker, or would you try and like just go no, for the guy who picks stupid picks? You weren't wrong when you said that like it's harder to prep in Swiss. Like you know, at least when you're prepping against just three teams that you know you're going to play your whole uh, group stage against, you know, you might put a little bit more effort in. I let's be honest, sometimes the Eastern teams, the LPL and LCK, can get a bit of an ego and overlook um some things i think it rarely ends up biting them in the butt but we've definitely heard i have i've seen interview clips and things like that in the past where it's like well who is this guy i don't even know who this is like i'm just gonna slap him down and move on with my life yeah, yeah. i think they'll either win or lose through uh PO, or not PO, sorry uh through summit and apa but i think it's more on them than anyone else on the team yeah Yep. No, I think I think I'm excited, man. These NA teams, they they're aggressive, they're skilled. I think uh, all three of them probably get out of groups. <laughs> and I think uh, Team Liquid will just do it the fastest. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, easy. Travis's microphone failed again. 
Oh, it failed for the third time. All right. Do you want to do any shout outs, Lotus, before we uh, say goodbye? Uh, yeah. Shout out to Alienware. Uh, shout out to you, Marks. I think it's uh, kind of nice to have a no bullshit kind of person around. You need to say stuff the way it is. Um, <clears throat> uh, all right. You too, Travis. Travis? I'll, throw, I'll throw a small shout out your way. I thought you couldn't hear me because your mic was muted. <laughs> All right, we need to lose that mic again. No, I was kidding. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, uh, one of your really long time subs too, uh, Naked Homeless Man. He's one of my best friends. <laughs> I think he has like 60 something months. He's, uh, yeah, he's a cool dude. But yeah, that's it. Just realized I was still muted on uh, on stream. Yeah, I uh, I appreciate Naked Homeless Man. He's a He's a great individual who spends all of his money on subbing to my channel every month and can't <laughs> spend any on clothing or a home. All yeah. right. Uh, thank you so much for the call and we'll catch you next time. Thanks guys. Have a good one. All right. We got one final caller and then please everyone stick around uh, after this because I have a uh, sponsored stream and it's just super swell if you leave the stream on, comment and chat every now and then. Hang out, keep me company. We're going to be playing a cool game for two hours. Actually, a game that I am uh, excited for to come out because I'm a big fan of the Total War series, and this is part of that. So uh, hopefully hopefully you all can stick around. It's always nice whenever people are still there. All right, we got Presidente here. Presidente, where are you calling from? I uh, call from Seoul, Korea. Seoul, Korea. Hey, perfect. Uh, what do you want to... Uh, talk about it on the show. Uh, I just realized, uh, President, you posted two topics. So if you're unclear of which one I pulled you for, it was actually your first one about the world's theme. Uh, yes, uh, the this year's world's theme fits North America perfectly. The North America lacks both the grind and the glory, and uh, I guess I'll have to elaborate. Yes, please. The the reason I meant. The reason I said the uh, North America lacks the grind, I let's forget the glory because NA hasn't won anything internationally, anything meaningful. So just the uh, grind part. I think uh, let's go back to 2021. Um, the, I think uh, was Team Liquid Alfari appeared on your show in 2021, where he mentioned about the nature of the training process, how is uh, it's not meaningful, anything meaningful like uh, NA to practice in NA in North America. The, how the scream goes, meaning like if a team doesn't like the pick and bends during the practice, they just you know reset and uh, they do that all over again until they get the right pick and bend they want. Also the. Uh, at yes, uh, yesterday's time, after Golden Guardians lost to BDS, the Gory had an interview with the the Korean media, saying that you know it's real. It's been really difficult for him to you know have a meaningful practice, or getting on the same getting on the same boat with other team members after having many 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 discussions in terms of. Uh, uh, the team, uh, the team fight perspective, how they should, you know, approach the team fights and how they should approach the pick and bends. And besides that, the difficulty of having a meaningful, um, I kept saying meaningful because it's the word meaningful has been used many, many times on the article, many articles. And, uh, sorry, I'm being. I, it's been a while that I spoke in English, so please excuse me. No, you're me. good. I appreciate it. No, I, I think you've made your point well that um, North America has no glory and our version of the grind, um, maybe not the best version of the grind that teams are doing worldwide. Yes, and uh, one one more point i like to add is that the, the Ignitas Rich, he uh, when he got back to Korea, he turned his Twitch stream on. He talked about how the environment is like in North America. And uh, uh, I think a viewer questioned him, why didn't, why didn't, why, why, why did you never play a gangplank in North America? 
And I think Rich responded to the question, not quote unquote, but I think he said, how could I play gangplank on a 50 fucking ping? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's the, yeah. Sorry. Your premise was that the, this theme for this year is good for North America because it's the grind and the glory. But I believe you are suggesting that perhaps it, maybe that's more in an inspirational way and that we will hopefully be inspired by this theme having lacked it in our life previously. Am I understanding what is going on here? Yeah, maybe the, the NA has to consider it like changing the infrastructure. Like, you know, let's, let's, let's be real. It was my undergraduate days in NA that I tried to play league and I was based in Chicago. So I had a great ping, like five millisecond or something. But we, if I tried to play with other friends from East Coast or West Coast, they complain having the server in the, you know, Central Midwest, basically. So they like 100, 100 plus ping, 50 plus pings. Is, environment wise, it's not healthy. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Actually, there's someone in chat. John Oki says LCS has zero excuse. I think it's the opposite. Presidente here is saying that the LCS just, it, we have we have to play with sandbags with our. Like Rich is the best, would have been the best GP in the world if only he was allowed to play, but he had 50 ping, you know, like that's, that's the truth. We are held back. LCS, I think, would have this glory if it wasn't for the ping is what Presidente is saying. He's, he's, I, I see what you're saying. I have definitely, we would have the glory if it wasn't for the ping. Absolutely. That's correct. Right, Desimea? So, um, or sorry, I'm sorry. Can I, con can I continue? Yes. And, uh, you know, you know, every league viewers in Korea, we like to watch other leagues, LPL, LEC, LCS. LCS, pretty difficult because we have to wake up like 6 or 7 in the morning, wait for the uh, uh, pregame show, blah, 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 and we wait, for, we wait for the matches to begin. And after we watch it, we just have this feeling of emptiness. You know, there is a you know, famous analogy among Korean communities, league communities, like, Watching LCK, LPL, sometimes LEC is like watching a good chess game. But watching LCS is like watching a great comedy show like Key and Peel. <laughs> so, and what they meant by that is that is, sorry for my French, but this is the only like the, the, the close words that I can think of is a, is a shit show. Tactic wise, pick and bands, and and sometimes I don't know what coaches are thinking. You know, they they may sound they may like sound prof. They may you know they may like sound. They make some great. Maybe they make great consideration. You know, into this pick and bands, they like to you know be become the sound. You know, proficient to their players when it comes to like pick and bands or blah blah blah. But you know, from outside perspectives, like me as a viewer, it's just like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> so, very good. Well, thank you, Presidente. I think you've given us <laughs> some great things to consider I, as we head towards worlds. I, uh, this was a great call to end on. I, yeah. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank, thank you for having me. Yeah. Th thanks so much for coming on. And uh, hopefully, will you be? Will I be seeing you at worlds uh, when I get over uh, there? Yeah, I'm heading to Low Park today uh, to, to watch the uh, you know playing stage. Yeah, nice. Well, yes. I'll be there for the first part of Swiss. So if you see me at, uh, I think it's at KBS Arena, is I think where it is. But yeah, if you see me there, uh, uh, it, it, it will be a hassle. To the traffic is just not great. <laughs> oh boy. There. Okay. Yeah. Well, either way, thank you so much for the call, and we'll catch you next time. All right, thank you. Yeah. Always I, a I, fun I, one. I saw some people being like, what is the take here? And it's there's no take. It's just facts. Yeah. <laughs> so true. All right. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about Santorin retiring. Um, we didn't get any takes about it, which I think is – it's okay. We were talking mostly about Worlds, but I don't want to not acknowledge it, so – uh, I mean, I really enjoyed interviewing Santorin over the years. He's a really uh, great, nice gentleman. 
of a man. Um, so I'm sad not to see him in the league, but I look, if I think people should prepare themselves for a lot of players not playing next year, especially players that have been around for a while. Like if you told me Jensen, double if Santorin, uh, core JJ, blah, blah, blah. You tell me like half these folks and the folks that have been around for as long as them are not, competing in the league next year I would believe you because I think I think that you know the, maybe some of the incentives are changing perhaps on the salary side so um I don't think that he will be the first let's put it that way um but maybe we we get the next generation Mark I don't know if you have any thoughts on this you look like you're about to fall asleep no I was there's a tabbed out uh i am sad that he's gone i really like santorin i think he had a bummer of a year and i think uh while the salary dropping thing is like you said going to hit some people i think it's especially going to hit people who are um not on winning teams currently and looking up a potentially long road back um that's unfortunate i think uh you know he's i don't know what he's going to do next but I don't think he necessarily needs to leave the NA scene. I'm not sure uh, what plans are next year for co-streaming. I'm not sure if he would want to do stuff on the desk. Uh, I think, you know, there's, I think he's en- there's stuff. engaged to somebody who is not in the U.S. So. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was I one of the big be... things in his post, too, was he's just ready to start his life a little bit with uh, family and things like that. Yeah. Um, so never mind. Probably the last we see of him for a while then outside streaming. And maybe co-streaming, but yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Either way, um, Mark, anything you want to shout out or plug here? Uh, no. Uh, we didn't talk about the, the theme song. I talked about it on the dive. I saw someone asking about the time about that a little bit. I don't know what your impression was of Gods. Uh, I won't hit all the same stuff. I talked about it quite a bit on the dive if anyone wants to check that out. But uh, just m- mildly disappointed from a uh, creative differences standpoint. I think it's it's uh, sounds very very samey to a lot of the stuff that our world's anthems at this point. And as a new jeans fan, it sounded like it took very little of them. So I uh, was hoping for more. Yeah, I I saw some Reddit conversation that I think did a good job of encapsulating it, which is that in the past, world's anthems felt like anthems and they felt epic and uh, full of fantasy. Like whenever you're listening to rise and the players in the finals are coming up on the stages and it it just feels epic and big um, and intense in a way that I think a lot of the more pop oriented stuff has not um, for me. am am, Am I crazy? How does this, how is this pop for most people? This doesn't sound like the pop that I listen to. I don't know. Like this, I, this is this. I feel like people calling this pop are just like totally in what, how Africa would you classify? with genre terms. This is like again, like stadium anthems. Like if you listen to like K-pop, it doesn't sound like K-pop. You listen to Olivia Rodrigo, she's pop. Sabrina Carpenter, Doja Cat. Like this doesn't sound like anything on the radio. You know, like it's not pop. So people who say like I miss the old school stuff, I'm like this is exactly. Do you feel like, like it orchestral. sounds like Rise and stuff? And Legends yeah, Never Die. It's the exact same. Dude, it's th- their formula is the exact same. It's like the slow build into the, like the the chorus, which is they repeat the same thing twice. Uh, like Phoenix, take, burn it all down, take over this, rise, and legends never die are all takes on the same formula. There's just different levels of success for each of them, and like I think that they all are basically the same genre sound, where it is like this kind of orchestrally. Uh, build up with some synths that like goes for this like bombastic burn it burn it all down gods gods taking over fly fly phoenix legends never die you know well, like i, didn't expect I think you to do a live melody Dude, i'm just saying that they're they're all very very similar and like to me they they are all anthems they're all just like anthem like or, they're there for stadiums. They're there to be like, put your hands up on the chorus, you know, and vibe. I just don't think that the, like, I think people are getting burnt out on them, but like what pop artists does this sound like to people who think this is pop? I I don't get it. I'll go back and listen to it. Then I, I'm willing to be wrong on this. I'm certainly not a music expert. Um, 
But to me, it just feels, and, and maybe it's more that it's getting, I'm feeling burned out, but I feel like it lacks a lot of the heart and beat of the older world songs. Yeah. I, I'm not saying that like it's, it's great and you should, you should love it. And like, this is a uh, evolution of the formula. I think you can argue it's a step back and like, it doesn't have the same level of energy and excitement that these other ones brought. Like legends never die is like low key becoming one of my favorites. The more I listen to it, like legends never die slaps rise slaps. I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent. No, I this love both of those. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah like this is not favorite. the same ballpark for me, but like, I don't think it's a different genre than those really. Huh. Well, at least to me, yeah. Yeah, you no, know, it's fine. I, I, I mean, Twitch chat seems to agree with you more than than me. There's a lot of people all coming out of the woodwork to try to flame me. Um, which well, is I think they're just disagreeing with. I, I saw that comment that you're talking about, and a lot of people upvoted it, and like, I, I felt like I was taking crazy pills because I'm like, do people listen to? Pop? I think the people saying this don't actually listen to pop, but like, I mean, I listen to pop. Well, that's why I'm surprised you you said it too, because like you listen to. You listen to, to fucking to the Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah, I like the new Doja Cat song, which I know I is love Doja Cat. Yeah, but I have you heard her new song? One? No, I don't know. Yeah, people, I think she's getting flamed a little bit because it sounds different. Dua Lipa, like right? Like, isn't Dua Lipa pop? Like, pop is going through like this like funky phase right now. Paint the town red is that the new Doja Cat song? I'll I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do- yeah. Whatever. Anything you want to shout out or plug? No. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, I'm not sure when the next hotline league will be. It'll be sometime next week, but I'm going to be traveling when the show's happening and then, or would normally happen. And so we won't do it then. And then, uh, we're going to get into worlds and then Mark is going to be, I think you will be back by then. So you'll next time you'll be in your room and I'll be in a hotel. Yeah, we'll do a swapsies. You're yeah. coming to Dublin, right? Oh, yeah, I'm on my way to Dublin right now. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be in Korea. Um, so, what? But we'll have one. We might be able to swing one before uh, Swiss actually starts. Come to think of it, and well, almost certainly we will actually, because there's a bit of a there's several days one after I get back in Korea that. Oh yeah, so we'll have one after plans before Swiss. Stay tuned for the timing on that. It's going to be weird because of time zone stuff and that's always how worlds gets we have to do these at different times so uh but anyway thank you everybody for watching uh we really appreciate it stick around on stream that's really appreciated and then uh if you want to sub to the youtube or to the twitch channel for uh, free with prime that's really really appreciated and uh, you can become a youtube member and watch i'm gonna have a bunch of content coming out during worlds there'll be a bunch of stuff up there that members can watch early uh, it's as low as two dollars and ninety nine cents. You just hit the member join button, and uh, it's a great way to support the channel. Because uh, I spent six thousand dollars on hotel rooms last week. So, anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Catch y'all later.